live from Washington. Thank you so much for joining us on what is no doubt a very busy time in Washington. Historical developments right now. Benjamin Netanyahu calling this deal a great deal for Israel and a great deal for peace. Is the U.S. hoping that what we heard just moments ago from the Palestinian Authority president pretty much dismissing this plan something that can be negotiated and can he be brought back to the table to make this actually something that can come to fruition? Yeah, that's absolutely right. We think that this is a historic day here in Washington. You've seen President Trump and his entire administration, uh, Secretary Pompeo, Brian Hook, Jared Kushner, and others, being really willing to take on the hard issues, the hard challenges. Uh, and, and that's what you saw in the speech today. We have, for a long time, as it relates to the Palestinian people, been talking and messaging directly to them. You'll remember it wasn't that long ago uh, that Jared Kushner and Brian Hook were in Bahrain uh, for the economic conference related to the Palestinians. And we believe fundamentally that the Palestinian people deserve better than what they have. They deserve a brighter future. They deserve economic opportunity. And so our vision uh, that this administration has laid out today is a path towards that brighter future that we have been talking about for some time. Obviously, there's a lot of details that you have been discussing on your show and the parameters of this deal. But if there is, uh, if the Palestinians agree to no longer fund terrorism and the number of uh, conditions that the president has laid out, we see president, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, Benny Gantz, uh, others see a path towards an eventual Palestinian state. This is something that has never been agreed to before. This is the first time there's a map that has been agreed to. This is a historic day in diplomacy here in Washington. And so we would just encourage the Palestinian people to take a look at this plan, to take a look at the vision, uh, and to consider uh, what their future can look like if they stop doing the same things that have failed for decades now. We hear exactly what you're saying, Benjamin Netanyahu, Benny Gantz supporting this deal. And of course, we heard from President Donald Trump just a few hours ago. But what we heard from the Palestinian Authority president just moments ago was that when he heard just about the Jerusalem issue and that Jerusalem would remain the undivided capital of Israel, he already knew that it was enough. What is it going to take to convince Palestinian leadership to get on board and reach some kind of middle ground that really works for everyone, a vision for everyone in the region. Well, we certainly have been encouraged by uh, the number of our Arab allies that showed up today to the White House. Uh, we had UAE, Bahrain, Oman. Uh, we're in conversations and consultations with many other leaders in the Middle East. And so we're, we are, of course, uh, looking to our friends and allies, our partners in the Middle East, especially in the Gulf, uh, to help bring the Palestinians to the table. Um, and we also want the Palestinian people to judge this plan uh, for themselves. You know, people in the Middle East, throughout the Middle East, uh, you have seen, I've talked about this on, on your show on I-24. We've talked about the protests that we've seen uh, in Iran, in Iraq, in Lebanon, and elsewhere. And that's because we really believe that there have there have been people uh, in the Middle East that have decided, you know, they're sick of endemic corruption. They're sick of not having transparency and accountability from their government. And we believe and hope that the Palestinian people will be able to look at this vision. You know, no one thinks that anything's happening tomorrow, but the Palestinian people need to look at this plan for themselves and see that uh, they may not agree with every aspect of it, but if we can come to the table, if we can get the Palestinians and Israelis to talk to each other, there is a plan for Palestinian statehood, and the Israeli government has never agreed to this before. This is a historic day, no matter how you look at it. Don't now, waste this opportunity. Now, looking specifically at the wording in the plan, it says that Jerusalem will stay united and remain the capital of Israel, while the capital of the state of Palestine will be Al-Quds and include areas of East Jerusalem. Now, this has sparked some confusion since the plan was announced because in terms of reaction here in Israel, people are saying, is this not contradictory? Would you be able to break down exactly what this means? No, I think really what has to happen is for the Israelis and the Palestinians to come together and to discuss this. You know, obviously, President Trump uh, made the historic decision to move the American embassy uh, to Jerusalem, which had been the law of the land. Um, and he has been one of the reasons that we're able to get to this moment today is because uh, there has never been a greater friend than President Trump uh, to the state of Israel. So again, this isn't uh, this is not something that we expect everybody to sign up to tomorrow. We understand the point of this vision is to show everyone in the Middle East, 
not just Israelis, not just Palestinians, but the entire Middle East, what a vision for peace could look like. And we need everyone to come to the table uh, to discuss this. And, and we think uh, we think that we have a, a real plan with real teeth here. And, uh, and that's where we need to get to next. Now, in another development we were hearing really just moments ago, the Israeli cabinet is already expected to meet on Sunday to vote on the issue of annexation. Now, would the U.S. have expected such a quick response to this controversial issue of annexation in certain parts of the West Bank? Uh, did you say that they're meeting for a vote? Sorry, I had a, a break in the, that in the, the hearing. The Israeli cabinet is actually going to be voting on the issue of annexation. Obviously, annexation parts of the West ah. Bank, the Jordan Valley, very contentious in this region. Would you have expected such a prompt response after the plan was revealed just a few hours ago? Yeah, well, I think there's still a lot to be determined. We obviously respect the sovereignty uh, of, of all nations. Uh, we understand that Israel is a very vibrant democracy. Uh, there's a lot of people and opinions uh, and a very strong government. You obviously have elections again coming coming up. So we certainly uh, expect, uh, respect the sovereignty of the Israeli government to debate um, and to decide these decisions. I, I would just note in the vision um, that both Prime Minister Netanyahu and Benny Gantz have agreed to, uh, the uh, we, we looked at that four year uh, time window before uh, we get to the eventual Palestinian state. And there's obviously a lot that the Israelis have agreed to in terms of holding on settlements during that period if, of course, the Palestinians meet the conditions uh, in the plan. Thank you so much. That's the U.S. State Department spokesperson Morgan Ortega speaking to us live from Washington. We appreciate your time.